So right now, right now I am dead in the middle of building my 1988 Honda Accord with an LS swap. Now for this project I've been doing a whole bunch of welding, so that gave me the idea. What if I go out and try to find and buy the cheapest welder that I can possibly find and review it and compare it to a welder that I'm extremely familiar with. So that's what we're doing in this video, comparing and reviewing the cheapest Harbor Freight welder that I could possibly find. And now, you're watching an unofficial review by a legitimate automotive enthusiast slash car builder Adam Bodie. This is an unbiased and non-pay for review as a paid review is simply an infomercial. This is not an infomercial. Welcome to Bodie Vision Reviews Stuff. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on the first episode of Bodie Vision Reviews. Now, what exactly is Bodie Vision Reviews, you might be asking. Now, those reviews, they're just going to coincide with whatever I'm working on at the time. For example, I've been doing a lot of welding, like I just said in the intro. So today, I'm going to be comparing and reviewing two different welders. We have a very cheap, this is a 90 amp flux core welder from Harbor Freight. I just bought it super cheap online, so that's gonna be one of them. And then the other one that we're looking at is my Hobart Handler 210. I'm extremely familiar with that one. I learned a lot on a welder just like this. So the first thing that I wanna do with this review is I want to get into some hashtags. Wait, some numbers. Let's get into some numbers. So I'm gonna break these numbers down into five different categories. The first one is going to be the amp output range. The second one is going to be the wire sizes. The third one is going to be the wire type. Fourth one is going to be the settings range. And the fifth one is the material that you can be welding. So to start off with, we're gonna go with the amp output range, and this is going to affect how thick of a material you can weld. So the thinner the material, the lower the amperage you're gonna want, the thicker the material, the more penetration you're gonna need, so the more amps you're going to need. So the Harbor Freight Welder has a range of 55 to 90 amps, where the Hobart has a range of 25 to 210 amps. And moving on to the wire sizes that you can run in these welders, the Harbor Freight, the only wire size that you can use is a .030, and the Hobart, you can use a .024, .030, or a .035. So moving on to the wire types that you can use in the Harbor Freight welder, the only thing that you can use is a flux core wire. And in the Hobart welder, you have a wide variety to choose from depending on what you want to weld. So you can use a solid wire, stainless steel wire, flux core wire, or an aluminum wire. So now settings on the welder. The Harbor Freight only has two settings, and these will make a lot more sense when we're actually messing around with the welders in just a moment, but you have minimum and maximum, two settings only. Now the Hobart welder actually has 11 different settings that you can use. So if you're plugged into 115, you can use setting number four, five, six, or seven. And if you're plugged into a 230 outlet, you can use one through seven. Now keep in mind, number seven on a 115 plug might be very similar to a number two, three, or four on a 230 plug. So at bare minimum, you have seven different settings even though there's 11 different changes that you can make. Now the last thing that I wanna look at is the ability to weld different types of metal. The Harbor Freight can only do steel where the Hobart welder can do steel, stainless, and aluminum. Now with the Hobart, if you wanted to weld either ones of those metals, you'd have to change out your gas. And this is mainly about the Harbor Freight welder comparing it to a different welder. If I did a review specifically focusing on the Hobart welder, I could get into that. You have to switch up your gas depending on what you're welding. But again, I'll get into that a different time. I really just wanna focus on the Harbor Freight compared to X, not so much on what X is. And also I think it's important for me to let you know how much these welders actually cost. The Harbor Freight welder, brand new is coming in at $99 and the Hobart 210 is a $850 welder. So now that we compared some of the numbers, and keep in mind there's many more things that we could have compared, but those are just five items that I actually wanted to compare. So what we have right here, this is just some square stock that I had laying around, and this thickness is actually 1 8 inch thick, or it's 11 gauge, so this would be equivalent to doing 11 gauge sheet metal, which is pretty thick. So I guess I'm going to start off with the Harbor Freight Welder, I'm just going to slam it on max. I'm just gonna slam it on max because that's what I believe we should do. And for the Hobart welder, I'll put it on the suggested settings according to what it says underneath the flap right here. So what we're gonna do, we are using a .035 wire. 
11 gauge then over here so we're doing 75 25 argon and gas so that says we should have it on number five and 40 so if you go over here we'll go number five and then right there is 40. so suggested setting for the hobart and just max for the harbor freight and another thing that's important to note i'm going to try to replicate the technique from one to the other in other words i'm going to try to weld them out the exact same way so that way we can really see the difference in the machines as opposed to me i want to stay consistent the inconsistencies will be shown with the machines so here we go cheapo depot hook up your ground There's, there's got to be something wrong with this. I, I might just not be doing something right. Let me just replicate it with the Hobart welder and then maybe we'll redo this. I, I don't know. I'm just going to do the same exact technique. I'm hopefully going to say, I'm hopefully going to take about the same amount of time to do one pass because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to try to have to adjust myself to make this work. Maybe in a little bit, we'll see what I have to do to make it work. And then I'll let you know what that difference is. But this is... This is awful. That's that's not even that right there that to me that's a nice decent weld now the wind really picked up as we got to the end so my shielding and my gas got a little bit messed up but that to me in my opinion being not a professional welder that is definitely passable good penetration good heat looks really nice now again besides the end that's what it looks like when the wind started to pick up now if we're in the shop we don't have to worry about that this looks good I don't know what is going on with this. Now again, that was me being consistent with how much time I spent on it and how much I was moving. So I did two steps forward, one step back. Two step forward, one step back. That's exactly how I did this. And that looks good. Besides the end, this, that's, that's awful. So I think with the Harbor Freight Welder, the one that you can see is right here, which is an absolute catastrophe. The penetration was just not even there at all. Maybe 90 amps, no, not maybe. 99% sure 90 amps, which is the maximum amperage that we can get out of that, is not enough to penetrate that metal, so it just doesn't really work out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mess with it off camera, and then if we can get it to work, or get it even closer, that'll be this next clip. So what we have here, what I ended up doing is I slowed way down compared to how I was when I was using the Hobart welder, which is how I was the very first time. I slowed way down and just really focused on watching that puddle, trying to drag it across from one end to the other, but it was very hard to even see much of a puddle at all. So one thing with the flux wire is it looks really gross and nasty, but that's not actually how bad it looks. And the reason why it looks that way is because the shielding is within the wire as opposed to the shielding being in the gas. So if we just take this, and then hit it really quickly see just like that it actually looks a lot less awful than it did just a second ago but I don't know how I feel about how much I would trust this for any kind of structural welding at all it might look okay and also I don't know if you can see underneath you can actually see some penetration through the metal. So this, this might work if you're just kind of throwing together something kind of quick and cool. But if you're actually building a frame of a car or anything that serious, 
I wouldn't use this if you're just whipping up like a go-kart or just have to weld something together for a table. This would be just fine. So now that we did some thicker metal and we did some angle joints, I wanna do some thinner stuff just right here. I don't know exactly what gauge this is. I think it's 18 gauge, I believe. I don't know, just something that I had laying around. So I wanna go ahead and whip that up and do a lap joint. I wanna compare the Hobart. I'm gonna do the exact settings that it recommends for an 18 gauge sheet metal. And then the Harbor Freight, since I don't know exactly how I should do it, I'm gonna do maybe one side on min, one side on max. I'm just gonna do a little time lapse right now and then we'll see what we think after the fact. Perfect. So now taking a closer look after welding up some thinner sheet metal, there's some pretty big differences. So starting off with the cheap welder, the Harbor Freight welder, this looks pretty gross. Keep in mind, this is on minimum. I didn't even go to maximum because I was having a hard time not burning through. So the penetration is there. The penetration is good. Now this heat, where the heat came out to, I wish I could have turned the welder down just a little bit, but again, it was already on min. So this will work structurally. It's not the prettiest, a lot of spat going on, looking pretty gross. And then here's from the Hobart, that's looking a lot better. And if you can see the difference in the heat, how this is really nice and tight, pretty close to the weld. And this goes pretty far out, all the way to the edge of the metal. So I would have liked to turn this one down a little bit. And keep in mind, this is the Harbor Freight one, this is the Hobart one. So that looks a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. That one looks really good. This one doesn't look as good. I wish I could have turned it down a little bit, but this one will definitely work. Harbor Freight will work, Hobart will work as well, but it looks a lot better. So with the Harbor Freight welder, the $100 welder, what are my final thoughts on it? Is it good enough to use if you just need to do a couple things on the weekend? Well, sure. Is it good enough if you have a bigger project like completely welding in a frame and doing custom tubs on a car? I don't believe so. So it just really depends on what you're doing. You gotta ask yourself, how often are you going to be using it? And now, of course, this is the very bottom of the barrel welder, the $100 Harbor Freight welder. The $850 Hobart 210 that I'm using, that's a couple steps up. Now keep in mind, there are so many more steps up that you could possibly go, and there's a couple steps in between. There's some $300 to $500 welders that are great. I know Lincoln makes one. There's a couple other ones that, those might be a better alternative for you than the $100 welder. But if you really want to be serious about it, spend the extra $200 or so to get yourself a machine that's a little higher quality. Again, that's the bottom of the barrel machine. Will it work? Yes. Is it the nicest? Absolutely not. Is it the cheapest? Yeah. But will the cheapest work? I guess so, kind of. It just depends what you're doing. So the main reason why I would not buy the Harbor Freight Welder is because that amp range is just too small of a range. As you saw, it's a little bit too hot for thin stuff and not quite hot enough for thicker stuff. So you're restricted by that 55 to 90 amps where the Hobart one goes all the way down to 25 and all the way up to whatever I said it goes up to. I don't know exactly what it goes up to, but that gives me a better range in everything that I need the Hobart welder to do, it does. So I don't have any complaints about that, but that's for me personally. Your situation might be a little bit different, so ask yourself for your situation, will this work for you? So as far as the Bodie Vision Reviews videos, I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please leave a like. Those likes really go a long way. I wanna start promoting to get my videos liked a little bit more because if they're liked more, they're gonna get out more. The more they get out, the more revenue I have coming in to do cool projects like putting a LS in a 1988 Honda Accord. And speaking of my 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord, I promise you that is going to be the next video because I'm gonna start working on it now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe. Check out the merch, do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.